The College Coffson Select Board meeting to order January 5, 2023, from the Donald A. Russell meeting room. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Patty, would you call the roll? I will. David Douglas. I am here. Marie Brilliant. Here. Ruth Lyons. Here. Matt Nixon. Present. Roland Cass. Here. And at the head table, we have our assistant town manager, Mark Waltz. Thank you very much, Patty. Town managers report. Good evening, everyone. Dog licenses were due to be renewed by December 31st, and there's a late fee if not done by January 31st. So remind people to come in and please do them if they haven't done them already. Um, fire police and public works all work long hours related to the December 23rd and 24th storm. We had several road closures, but no major routes were closed. The fire department responded to two incidents of trees falling on homes and assisted the homeowners. Luckily, no one was injured. Public Works was able to treat the roads at the appropriate time that the salt didn't wash off and use the wind to get the roads dry before the temperatures plummeted. A warming shelter was open due to power outages in town. The state will be modifying the speed limit on Route 196 between Merrimee Bridge and 0.27 miles north of Bypass Drive. So basically, um, sorry, Village Drive. Halfway between Village Drive and the Route 201 intersection is going to be 35. The rest of it's going to be 50 miles an hour. Some good deeds were done by our public safety officers this holiday season. The Thompson Fire Association adopted a local family for Christmas and provided gifts and a Christmas dinner. And then on December 24th, the Thompson Police Department partnered with Hannaford Brothers to conduct a Fill the Cruiser event to raise food donations for the Western House. Citizen donations actually filled three cruisers with food donations and money of $2,940 in cash, which was turned into Hannaford gift cards for the Western House residents. And then finally, Monday night, we have our tax acquired property workshop at six o'clock p.m. right here. Excellent. Any questions? No. No boards. Public comment. I'm just curious. Here, the Robin Brooks. I live uh, in 47 Ivanhoe Drive. Good evening, um, everyone. I just was curious about the, the speed limit on 196. If you could just go over that again. I wasn't familiar with the landmark to match. So from the Merrimeeting Bridge, uh, we're across the Uskagan River, starts 50 there, and it's going to be continued 50 past Bypass Drive, past Village Drive, where the Highlands is, and then about halfway to the Route 201 intersection is going to drop down to 35 miles per hour. Okay, so we're talking about the bypass there, not about the best of the tops of the Mall. Correct, nothing's changing um, there. Just, the state you. did a traffic study and decided that they needed to lower it a little bit, so they're dropping it. Very good. Safety's good. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other public comment? Also, tonight on any of our items, if we have speakers, if you could write your name. There's a sheet that's been placed up there for Patty, and that we will have your name and address. Name and address, name and address on that sheet. Yeah. Any, whoops, we have no hands raised on that. Okay. Any correspondence, mm -hmm. anyone? Go ahead, Ruth. I have one from uh, Jan and Gary Fall. Gary and I appreciate your vote this past Thursday. You understand the real concerns that the neighbors near the proposed rezoning have. Also, your vote shows that you have respect for the comprehensive plan. We are very concerned that if this goes to town meeting, people are going to be voting on developing the present Crooker site and not about the rezoning and the negative effect it will have on our area of town. Thank you for your service. Janet and Gary Fork. Thank you. Anyone else ever? Any Just the corrections. Yeah. I was going to make note of that during. We can read it, but no, okay. okay. No adjustments. All right, so here we go. This is the interesting one. Consent calendar, approval of the minutes. So don't just say move it. Um, approval of the minutes of the regular select board meeting, December 15, 2022. So 
couple things. We got so Patty sent out the initial meeting minutes, which are in the packet. We she also received updates for spelling corrections and found that there was also an error in the identified zones in the map that Crooker submitted in November. They had the wrong zone names. Dan Flagg had submitted that, and that's what Matt had brought up a correspondence. So that's, I think, covers the correspondence. Um, so in my opinion, so I'm going to put this out. In my opinion, the name changes, and there was one other clear, one other. With the town code section had an extra two, which had to correct. Correct. We, there was an extra two in the code section. Was from that meeting on December 15th. The incorrect, the incorrectly identified zone names was not what was presented was incorrect, but it would not be rectified, in my opinion, until it's part of a public meeting tonight. That the incorrect zones wouldn't have been part of that last meeting. We'll address it tonight when we talk about the timeline. Does that make sense? That I think we we make the changes, <coughs> we accept the meeting minutes with the name spelling corrections. Mm -hmm. But as far as the map being changed, that needs to be viewed in a public meeting, which in my mind would be tonight. <coughs> and then we would move forward and we would accept it at that point. The, does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, don't. Well, it's, I think exactly. <laughs> so to put that in motion, I look for approval of the what he said <laughs> minutes of the regular select board meeting, <laughs> December 15, 2022, with name spelling changes and one correction, removing a two from the town code section. Section. Um, That's my motion. I'm going to stop there before I add too much to it. So, second. Okay, motion and second. <clears throat> and then when we, all those in favor? One abstention. Okay. And then when we get to tonight to discuss, we'll we'll acknowledge <coughs> the new map, the new names on my map. <coughs> <coughs> Finished. Oh, we're on the new very first one, 2023, 2301. Consideration any appropriate action on accepting a grant for $2,880 from the Maine Municipal Association for the purchase of a five gas meter. Chief, are you going to speak to this? I don't have to speak. Um, basically, uh, it's, it's through MMA. Come up, please. Oh, sorry. Come on. What she said. Hello, I'm Deputy Fire Chief Jerry Pino. Uh, my boss is in another meeting and I drew this rock. <laughs> he says hello. Uh, so basically we're um, updating our gas meters on uh, four pieces of apparatus. The ones we currently have are just outdated. You can't get parts for them. Uh, so we're replacing them. With that said, MMA has what they call safety grants, and they're 100% grants, so the town doesn't have to put any money towards it. I filled out an application, uh, went through it with Derek. Uh, we sent it in, and we were approved for one meter. Um, that meter's been ordered, um, and basically, we just need you to accept that money uh, from MMA so that we can put it, when we turn it into finance, we'll put it towards that meter purchase. Also, I hope to come back in April with the same kind of a uh, request because they have, they basically do this every uh, every quarter. So gas meters are right now, one of the top things that can get accepted. So I've already submitted for a second one. So hopefully we can update all our meters uh, through this process. That's what my finger cross is gonna be. So all we're asking tonight is, is that you accept, uh, you allow my boss, Chris, and uh, town manager Derek to accept those funds. Um, and there is no uh, monies that the town has to offer towards that. That's a 100% what we applied for, what they are going to give us. 
And I also have uh, in your packet, you have a picture of the, the new meter if you'd like, and it's the five gases. We've actually added uh, one of the gases that uh, we actually look for is for firefighter safety. You know, when a fire's out and you see it's in the buildings uh, doing what we call overhaul, it's still not necessarily safe for firefighters to work without our air packs. These new monitors have that um, ability to tell us if we can have our air masks on or they should be on. Um, so with the upgrade, we're also looking out for uh, firefighter safety and improvement in the future. Chief, with these gas meters, like once a year testing the updates, is that how is it? So uh, the newer ones, I'm not sure on these. Um, I will tell you, we went with the MSA, um, the MSA 5 gas meter. It's what a lot of departments are using. I've used them in other departments. They're the best. I believe the calibration on these is every couple of months. Oh. Um, and then I, I, I believe I've heard through the, the, the wind that you were on the fire department a few days ago. Years. So you remember like you used to have the can and the yep. thing and you jumped up in it somehow calibrated itself. And well, now these you actually just put into a docking station and it's just, you touch a button and it's done. So, so it's, it's a lot it off, losing. Okay. Yep. And we actually have one of our members uh, that takes care of all the meters because all this also not only does it have to be documented um, for main Bureau of Labor standards, um, it's uh, checked uh, daily on our truck checks. Um, obviously, these meters are used for carbon monoxide, propane, anytime what we call smells, anytime someone has a smell. Uh, these meters are actually used, so we use them quite a bit. Any questions? Anyone want to do a motion? <clears throat> I move that we uh, allow for the purchase of the Altair 5X gas detector as uh, um, listed uh, in the agenda packet uh, and accept the grant from the Municipal Association to pay for it. And second. Motion seconded. All those in favor. Unanimous. Thanks, Chief. I appreciate you guys' support. If you guys are all sat with me this evening, I am going to go check on the crews with the, the roads and stuff. Is there anything else you need for me? I do. Thanks. So. Have a good night. Everybody drive safe. Thank you. 2302 consideration and appropriate action on accepting a donation of $2,335 to the General Assistance Heating Fund. Let me to just read this. Sure. Okay. Um, on December 13, 2022, Crooked Construction made a generous donation in the amount of $2,350. So I just realized that. So is it $2,350 or $2,335? So. Uh, 2350 to the Thompson Heating Program, requesting select board accept the donation to be applied to the Thompson Heating Fund. <clears throat> so just so everyone, it's not what's in the um, agenda of 2335, it's 2350. Extra four, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Motion? Discussion? That's right, I kind of just read it. Motion and second. Yeah, I'll second. All those in favor? Look at us go. 2303, consideration any appropriate action on the proposed timeline for the Crooked Construction LLC request for a zone change. In the packet, we have the um, staff has gone back as we had asked to go back through and come up with a timeline of what this process may look like. The first step is something that will happen the January 20th, 26th. So I'm going to go through this just so we get it. The proposed timeline is January 26th, 2023. If we make the motion tonight, the planning board would set a February 23, 2023 public hearing at the Mount Ararat Forum on a zoning change. As soon as the planning board schedules the hearing, but no later than February 9, notice of the planning board public hearing must be posted. According to 22579 of town code requires 
ASAP 30-A MRSA 43529A requires notice of at least 13 days prior, which is where February 9 comes in, of a <laughs> hearing. 2379 of town code requires at least 14 days. So that's where February 9, sorry. February 9th, at the latest, notice of the planning board public hearing will be mailed first class to owners of each parcel to whom tax is assessed, who is one, in the district to be rezoned, two, who abuts the proposed, who abuts proposed rezone, or three, owns property within 200 feet of the area to be rezoned. Municipal officers need to file affidavit with the clerk describing notice given. February 8th and 15th, notice of planning board public hearing, including copy of map indicating property to be rezoned, to be published in the Times Record, um, 30-A MRSA subsection 43529B requires published notice at least 12 days before hearing, and again, at least seven days prior, so there are two public notices in the re record. 22579 of the town code requires at least 14 days. So again, we revert to the 14 day number, not the 12. February 23rd. So all that leads up to just the first, the public hearing before the planning board at the forum at Monarch High School. At six or 6.30, Mark, I just realized the January 26th. Um, we get the room reserved in six the hearing at six thirty. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Set up time. Public hearing at the high school at six thirty. Following that public hearing, the select board decides whether to vote, and whether vote will be at a town meeting on May thirtieth, or as a secret ballot on June thirteenth. If to be a secret ballot, board sets a public hearing at Orion Theater, Monarch Middle School. For X date in March. And we've now heard we can have March 30th, Thursday, March 30th, Thursday, Thursday March 30th. Thursday. Five babies. <laughs> Our vote proposed zoning change, which would be March 30th. Alternatively, select board could decide to hold a public <laughs> hearing and make final decision on the vote slash manner after the public hearing. So by March. But your meeting on March 2nd would be when you decide either we're going to have um, the hearing on the 30th, which would get us moving in the direction of say a referendum in June, or you could decide that you're going to just put it on the warrant, in which case you wouldn't need a separate, you wouldn't need that March 30th hearing. You just, uh, cover this as well as everything else at your warrant, at your town meeting warrant. So March second, we determine whether we would do the thirty, need the thirtieth or not. So <laughs> is that your two decision points you could use? So on March second, you just if you decided March second, we don't want this to go forward at all. Doesn't have to. Um, you could decide on March second, we're going to send this forward to a vote of one sort or the other, or you could just schedule your public hearing for in front of the select board for March 30th, and then at the end of that meeting, either there or at the one at the beginning of April, then you need to make a final decision on how the vote's gonna go, because we have to get paperwork to the state by the 13th um, of April, or I think it's the 14th of April actually, but if we're gonna do a referendum, we have to have that nailed down by the 14th of April. So if you were gonna do it at a town meeting, then um, it doesn't have to have that April in there. You know, By April 6, 2023, if it has not been previously done so, the select board determines whether vote will be at town meeting or on <laughs> June 13th in conject connection with the school budget validation vote. So the two that I didn't just read, Mark just read essentially to us, so I'll skip it. By April 14th, if by ballot in connection with June 13, 2023, budget validation vote notice must be filed with the clerk 60 days prior to the election. If it is to be June 13th, day of voting, but secret ballot vote, early voting would begin on May 15, 2023. 
So this is when we first talked. Um, we are looking to move this forward and part of the motion would be whether to request the planning board to hold a public hearing. The Mr. Flagg had given us, had given notice that some of the map was incorrectly marked, that's been fixed. That's why we didn't approve it in the minutes. This is where we are acknowledging that the changes to that map has been made. So now it's been in a public hearing with the correct names listed in the zones. Um, so that's this here. Did I mess anything up? Does anyone feel that I confused by reading it out loud? Okay. So in my opinion, this is just a simple housekeeping matter and we are setting a timeline that I'm looking for directions. It's not any sort of, there hasn't been an agenda, there hasn't been an item presented, anything new. I'm not looking for public comment. This is where we are setting our time frame. What does the board say? I'm looking for opinion. It really is a housekeeping piece, um, but I mean, given the conditions tonight and that folks did show up, I'd be okay with hearing stuff. Um, but again, I mean, we like you said, this isn't anything new. This is just a continuation of our conversation from last week. And I think the bigger, the, the bigger thing coming up would be the public hearing. Um, and certainly the March 2nd meeting uh, would be something pretty critical. Uh, but this tonight's vote, um, because we haven't read the motion yet, but the proposed motion is really just to direct the planning board to have a meeting. Or, excuse me, to have a meeting on a certain dates, right? Yep. Um, and that's the only thing I'll be voting on tonight. The uh, the rest of the schedule that was listed is, in my opinion, a little cart before the horse um, because we haven't gotten uh, past uh, even the public hearing, um, that, let alone voting on whether or not this proceeds. But I also understand why you have to lay it out because, I mean, there are. Correct. This wasn't yeah. prepared for the attention that you make all these decisions tonight. Yeah. It was just to make sure that we've got the timeline right so that we haven't by accident called right. the deadline. I get that. So in summary, I'd be okay with hearing from people. So the only thing I will say is that there is going to be public comment. It is only on the timeline. Because that is the only thing this agenda item is on, is the timeline. So if you have a comment about the timeline, not the project, that's fine. I have a comment on the process, I guess. Make sure you write your name yep. and announce your name. I'm James Temple, 14 Colville Road. Um, my only comment would be when you get, and I'm not sure whether it's in statute or not, on who you have to notify. This affects a lot more people than others. And I would like to see the notification go out over a wider group. I don't know how you go about that or if you can do that. So we've had this on various other items before on why we follow the letter of the rule is so that we don't ever make the mistake and we miss somebody. If you follow the letter of the law of what's there in the ordinances or what's there in the state law, we know that we have notified everyone that needs to be. If we were to expand it out X amount of feet from the zone, then it becomes, well, I'm four more feet away. Why wasn't I advised? So this is, it's it's the way to keep things okay. clean. But just so you know, that's yeah. how we've always done it in the past. We've had the same thing. There's been many other issues where people have, you know, maybe it should go further. Don't disagree or agree. But if we have a standard, we know that we live up to that standard and, and there doesn't become the, well, what about me? Okay. And the publication covers people further. Too. Yeah, correct. And, and if it goes further, as we said, any publications anywhere, they're, they're the entire. Yeah, I don't know anybody that reads the time tracker. So. It'll, be on, it'll be on the website. And a lot of people listen to WCME, which always make sure to cover these things. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. I'm Lawrence Brand, uh, 577 River Road, uh, also a member of the current member of the planning board. Uh, so there are a couple of things regarding the process. 
uh, that you have indicated that as, as of the last meeting, and by the way, I apologize that I was not all that coherent last meeting because I just made a two day round trip from Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, picking up my daughter <laughs> from college. So I was a little tired, uh, but anyway, a uh, couple of things with regard to the process. One, if you're sending this to the planning board, you have indicated that the role of the planning board is just to hold a public hearing and not to actually do anything else with regard to this proposal. Uh, and as we had talked about previously, there are three methods for doing a zoning change. Select board, which is obviously where we are right now, the planning board and by petition. And as far as I know, there's not been a petition uh, with 5% of the voters uh, signing that petition. So if you go forward with this, then you as a select board are making this your proposal for a zoning change. This is not a further proposal for the zoning change because you are initiating the zoning change as the select board. And you aren't just setting things up. Uh, this is because, like I said, there's not a certified petition. If you say, yes, we're going to go forward with this, then essentially you are finding that this is in the best interest of the town and that you find this in conformance with the comprehensive plan because it's your zoning amendment. And by finding it should go forward, then you're also saying we don't need. I'm going to stop because this conversation right now has nothing to do with the time frame. You are addressing what took place at the last meeting. Yeah. No, it's nothing I'm, to do with I'm, the time frame. I'm addressing that you should not be even doing the time frame. You should be, actually, I think you should be doing a motion to rescind what you did the last meeting. Okay, so that has nothing to do with the time frame. No, correct. But you should not be voting to go forward with the time frame. Okay. Because here again, there are many problems with that. You are, uh, you might, like I said, you might as well just, as you know, under the planning board had started this whole process a couple of years ago and there were things going on uh, with the planning board and that just died. Uh, so I'll stop there because I said, I don't think you should be voting to have the time frame go forward, uh, which it stopped here. The other thing with regards to the time frame is you should be providing uh, information to the planning board as to what you are looking for the planning board to do on the uh, both on the 26th as well as under the uh, public hearing that you are scheduling. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Hello. Larry, did you, sorry, Larry, did you write your name? Yes, I did. Okay. Thank Steve you. Crow, Thank 11 Coville Road. Just wondering when the public will see in the time frame what the plan really, what, what that's really going to look like. Um, the rezoning and really what the project will fully look like. I didn't hear that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Larios to Berkeley Lane, Thompson Lane. Uh, I know a lot of people who moved into our neighborhood from away as far as Skowhegan, other parts of the state. Uh, they moved here. They knew what the zoning was at the time. They knew that we had good, clean, fresh air, free from asphalt, dust, and smell. They paid a lot of money for the property. And uh, I believe that Crooker has alternatives with all the money they have. We're again going to just address the timing. Let's go forward. So that's what uh, I'm against the proposal, which is not on record. So 
spectacle. Now we're a spectacle. <laughs> All right. Go no, 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 no. <laughs> The board. Any comments? Anything? Questions? No, just reiterate what I said earlier. Um, <coughs> in my opinion, this is housekeeping. And uh, we've already passed something that says that we're going to be sending this to public hearing. Um, I think to answer the gentleman's question about uh, plans, um, that was something that we were pretty adamant, or at least Dave and I were adamant about at the last meeting, about having something like that at the public hearing, because otherwise, yeah, I mean, I obviously can't speak for the board, but that's not going to sit well with me at all. Um, and uh, no surprises would be good. So that's just to reiterate there. And again, tonight, um, as far as I'm concerned, I'm voting on a date uh, as the meeting has already been approved by the board to take the place. Yeah, I take your point one step further and say those plans have to get up in advance of that meeting. Yeah, I, don't, I think, and that's on that, that if it, they don't go in advance and they show up that night with it, that's not a good sign. I, I would say I agree with the both of you. That there needs to be a good. I, I would highly suggest that they have an absolute set date so that we know what we have. But it's not like the day to do it. You'd like to give me a date? I'll communicate it to you. Two weeks. Two weeks before. Two weeks prior to the hearing. Would you want that in the motion? Um, I'd say probably not in this one. It's, this motion actually provides the information Mr. Brand has asked for. It tracks the, the town ordinance and it gets very specific about these are specific lots that are going to be rezoned. Um, it, it has a map, which is also contemplated in the, the statute that needs to be included. But I can certainly contact the folks from Crooked Construction and say that you guys are expecting that their plans to be made public uh, or their presentation two weeks before. So people have a chance to review it. And then I know their intent um, for sure was to do a presentation that night. And I didn't ask them, are you going to release it early? But I'll tell them you guys are expecting it two weeks before. I, I absolutely agree that the sooner that people have the information, can study it and look at it and not have it a short time and be broadside anyway. And firmly express that. Mm -hmm. Certainly. I think the more I think here, Mark, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Wallace. <laughs> I think the more I think, I think it's got to be, it's got to be part of our motion. I think just that there not it's not more than an expectation. It is, it must be. I agree. I think adding the date maybe right at the end, something that says and what are we looking for, I guess? Well, essentially looking for the plans that will be presented at the hearing without any edits. And I think at the last meeting, um, the individual said that they didn't have any idea about what the site would look like, but if you go back to their 2018 presentation to the planning board, they have a pretty decent layout in several iterations. So I think they could probably provide some pretty specific information about what they plan to do. I will say, if we start requesting that, we start doing the planning board's job mm -hmm. because that action is going to be the job of the planning board to approve that stuff. We need to have their presentation materials yeah. available two weeks prior. I, and if and if it's not enough for people, because the more information, the better, right? For any any project, and if. So that's a balancing act they got to handle. They've got to accept that risk or reward. How much are they going to say? But I think if we start that's mandating good. Good point that they say that the plan is going to be X amount of feet from here, that's not our that's not our role. This is a zoning change. But there's nothing. But I think we should bidding them to doing that. No, nope, they could do that. But I think the presentation that they will make. 
presentation, which shall be made at the hearing, and will be made at the hearing, shall be made available to each player. Okay. That, that is the sentence at the end. All right. So I'll use the big font now. <laughs> Any other discussion points? I'll give you the second. Well, if Mark wants you to say, Mr. Chairman, in the Larry, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and maybe you, you covered this, uh, Warren Grant again, uh, but maybe you covered this in your discussion before the meeting started. Mm -hmm. But in the we haven't discussed anything prior to an open public meeting. Okay. Well, I think there was a there's a correction necessary on the proposed motion that came out in uh, Mark's uh, memo of January 3. About half, half, you're probably going to point out it says rural, or it should say um, suburban, right? Yeah, uh, halfway down through that, it says. Which talks about lot seven, right? Which is currently zoned rural residential. Yeah, we did that we fixed. That's, that's, that's what we're going to yeah. read now. Okay. That's I fixed. thought I heard you say anything. I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> we good? Motion to request the planning board to hold a public hearing pursuant to and in accordance with the procedures of section 225-79 of the Topsom Town, Town of Topsom Municipal Code of Ordinances on February 23, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. at the Forum in Mount Ararat High School to take public comment on the request of Crooker Construction LLC to rezone one, Town of Topsom tax map R2, lots one, 1A, 2, 7, the portion which is currently zoned suburban residential, 10, 37B, 39, 40, 41, and the portion of lot 96 that lies between River Road and a southerly extension of the eastern bound of lot 40 across lot 96, from suburban residential to limited residential, Two, down up top, some tax map are two lots 37 and 43 from rural commercial, rural commercial use to limited industrial. And three, tax map are two lots three, 3A, 3B, four in the portion of lot 97, which lies between lots three and four from suburban residential to industrial all as portrayed on the attached map dated January 3rd, 2023 by Boyle Tanner. And to request all presentation materials will be made, that will be made at the hearing from Crooker LLC be made available two weeks prior to the hearing. So the well, they, I think they need to get them to us and then we need to make them public. Right, we'll put them on that one today. Okay. It says 2022 instead of 2023. So nobody second my motion. Good call, Marie. Yeah, thanks so much for your big call. <laughs> so I would like to amend the motion. Legally, do I have to reread the ball? Yeah, I guess I do. Well, now whatever, I'll do it again. I don't want any of this coming back. No, it's the right thing, though. Uh, motion to request the planning board hold a public hearing pursuant to in accordance with the procedures of section 225 79 of the Tops, Town of Topson Municipal Code of Ordinances on February 23rd, 2023, at 6 30 p.m. at the Forum in Mount Aaron High School to take public comment on the request of Crucker Construction LLC to rezone one town of Topsom tax map R2, lots 11A27, the portion which is currently zoned suburban residential, 1037B394041, in the portion of lot 96 that lies between River Road and the southerly extension of the eastern bound of lot 40 across from lot 96 from suburban residential to limited industrial. Two, town of Topsom tax map R2, lot 37 and 43, from rural commercial use to limited industrial. And three, tax map R2, lots three, 
3A, 3B, 4 in the portion of Lot 97, which lies between Lots 3 and 4 from suburban residential to industrial. All is portrayed on the attached map dated January 3rd, 2023 by Hoyle Tanner. Additionally, the board expects presentation materials will be made available at least two weeks prior to the hearing by Crooker Construction LLC. Anything else? Anyone else? You got on dates. I thought you had your hand up. I was going to say. <laughs> That's the motion. Do we have a second? Motion and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. You got it. Uh, no, I don't need it. Thank you. How about that? <laughs> 2304, consideration any appropriate action on appointment to the planning board. This evening, we interviewed Andrew Munsey and Douglas Thompson to the planning board, both fine gentlemen. I will make a motion to, is there any discussion before I make a motion? Douglas Thompson. I make a motion to appoint Andrew Munsey. Second. Any other discussion? Just rationale. Just, My rationale? Yeah. Well, I was going to give rationale. Oh, you, I, I can't. I, don't... <laughs> I was just saying, like, I mean, he's clearly expressed interest in this for over a year now. Yep. Um, he's gotten a new. CPIC underneath his uh, his belt and to start district commission. He knows what he's uh, up for. Um, and uh, as far as we know, he's very connected, which is what's important here. Yeah, I mean, mine was, I think he won the interview process. So, <laughs> I mean, you put me on the spot, but go ahead. I just think they both were excellent candidates and Evidently, we're going to go with Andrew, which I'm very pleased with too. But both were excellent, and I hope the other gentleman pursues another committee and the town council. So I made a motion for Andrew. Do we have a? Did we get a second? Matt seconded it. Yes, Matt seconded, seconded, seconded it. it. All right. All those in favor of Andrew Munsey to the planning board, unanimous five zero. The next up is executive session. The executive sessions will be 23-05 and to into executive session pursuant to one MRSA subsection 405-6C to discuss acquisition of real property. Additionally, we will have 23-06 and to into executive session pursuant to one MRSA subsection 405-6C to discuss acquisition of real property. That is my motion to enter executive session. Second. A second. Motion and seconded. All those in favor. Same. You're going to have a same. Okay. 